What's up guys, Jay's Two Cents here, and this is a package that I have been anticipating now for months, and it's finally here. What we're gonna look at right here is, in my opinion, probably one of the most exciting small form factor cases that I have, well, been anticipating. And you know what? I don't usually have anything to do with Kickstarters or startups, but when I was initially approached about taking a look at this one months ago, and I said, contact me when we're closer to a production model, well, I didn't expect to hear anything back. Obviously, I was wrong. Whew, hacking peanut. JSU Sense is sponsored by Precision Camera and Video, Texas' largest photographer and video retailer. Located in Austin for over 40 years, their giant 20,000 square foot showroom floor, local workshops, and worldwide shipping are just a few reasons why you should head right now to precision-camera.com. I mean, if I make a mess, it's okay. Nick has to clean it. So what we're gonna be looking at today is the Ghost S1 case from Loke. I think that's how you pronounce it. Link's in the description below. Definitely worth checking out. It's a Swedish company, so I could be mutilating the name. I'm sorry if I am. But to give you an idea of how small this is, this is a box in a box. And then it's inside the box. So as you can see, the case just keeps getting smaller and smaller. One of the few times in life where smaller is sometimes better. Ask me how I know. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just start off by saying that this case right here, on the surface, to me looks an awful lot like the N1, but don't let that fool you because this right here is quite a bit different. In fact, see, make sure I'm not missing anything here. So we got some screws. It's also important to point out that this is a pre-production model, but they are really close to doing production on this. So, so if you guys wanna learn more about it though, definitely go to the description box below where you can learn more. So this is the Ash Gray. And this, to give you an idea of its size, is not even big enough to hold a pair of my shoes. But yeah, you can like see straight through that. There is so much ventilation on this. Comes in two colors, ash gray and arctic white. Oh man, so everything on this is milled out of a solid block of aluminum or aluminum. 1,320 individually milled holes in each side panel, which is pretty amazing. But look at that. Man, we're gonna do a tear down here. We're gonna mock up a couple of parts on there. We've got some fingerprints. I was kind of hoping for the white one because the white would have showed a lot less fingerprints, but that's okay. Yeah, I don't even know where to start. This is so cool. So one of the things that makes this quite different is the fact that it is modular. So I just took the top off right here. This is referred to as a top hat. I mean, it comes with three different size top hats, a small, medium, and large, but the base dimensions on this are 183 millimeters high, 140 millimeters wide, 320 millimeters long. So that is it right there. Like I said, this is about the size of one of my shoes. I feel like taking my shoe off just to compare it for size. But then you guys will see how big my feet are and I don't want y'all to get jealous. So with that said, this is the extra large or the large top hat right here, which adds an additional 65 millimeters on here so that we can mount things up here like radiators, extra fans, they sent me the larger top hat so that I could kind of go balls to the wall with cooling because this is water cooling friendly. Now that's what makes this quite a bit different though than other small form factor cases like this is the fact that it is completely modular. One of the struggles of building in small form factors or in this one here, significantly small form factor, we'll call it SSFF, is the fact of uh, space constraints. And with that, you usually have to make quite a few trade-offs in terms of what parts can you fit in there, it's very streamlined in that only a few parts on the market would fit, like small form factor graphics cards. You know, you guys have all seen the short stubby graphics cards. There is, of course, you know, small form factor power supplies or SFX, which is gonna be needed in this case right here as well. But building in it has always been extremely difficult because it's hard to get your hands in there, especially if you can only build from one side like typical small form factor cases are. But what's cool about this guy, the Ghost S1, all the sides come off. You build onto the spine, which is the main structure, and then you put everything back on around it. This comes off, this is actually the bottom right here. You can tell that it's got the rubber feet. But you can see on there, you've got your mounts for your fans and radiators. Because the cool part is, the top hat you just saw me take off the top, you can also put on the bottom. 
So you can extend the bottom of it, you can extend the top of it. So you could have fans on the bottom pushing air through all the way up. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask for another, another top hat so that I can do that. Cause I really want to sort of experience that. Oh yeah, so I did do it right. See this guy slides out. That's one of the side panels right there. There's that. This is one of the other side panels. And now you can see we've got what we are dubbing here our spine. So we have also got in here our front panel connectors because it has an aluminum button right here. That's got a satisfying click sound to it. Quality buttons. But as you can see, we also have our PCIe 16X Gen 3 riser cart because as you can see, your graphics card mounts on, you know, right here on the opposite side of where your motherboard goes. So your motherboard's gonna go here, your graphics card is gonna go on the back side over here. And I'm gonna actually kind of mock that up right now so you can see. Unfortunately, I don't have an SFX power supply. I could have swore I did. Maybe we'll have to check the inventory. But this is the spine. This is what you build on. And then like you saw, you just put all the side panels back on when you're done. Now the riser card is also 100% shielded, so that's gonna be nice, no interference there. And the riser card is also rigid mounted. So yeah, let's go ahead and see how it looks when we start putting a few parts in there. So I think a Titan XP would look pretty damn good in here considering the fact that it's black and it matches the case. But I wanna show you how much room you actually have for custom graphics cards, even in this ultra small form factor build here. So we just mount it right onto our riser card. You would actually clamp it down with this piece right here. But look at all the extra room you have. You've got your PCI Express power cables right here which line up with this notch. Plenty of room between the side panel. Slide this back on just to show you. Bam. And then that pulls in fresh air through this part right here and exhausts it out the back. As you can see, fairly separated from where the motherboard and cooler are gonna go. So the graphics card has its own compartment, which is very, very nice to keep it from interfering. But what if you have a custom graphics card? So if it's greater than two slot and longer than 305 millimeters, it's not going to fit. It will fit higher cards. So let's test that. Let's push that to the limit with the 1080 Ti Kingpin. Look at the size of this card versus the case. That is massive. Okay, we got this. We got this. Boy, that's so close. Get in there. Go to your home. So, unfortunately with the Kingpin, we're also impacting right here. It's about a quarter inch off, but it impacts right there. It's this piece that we're hitting on. And even with this angle, we're talking millimeters off. So here's the thing. If I were building in this today and I really wanted this to fit, I would Dremel that a little bit. Not the cooler, the case. Because it's barely, barely, barely not fitting. So when we go to build in this, I'm actually gonna be doing a water-cooled version of this. This case will be water-cooled, graphics card and CPU. It's definitely gonna be worth checking out. Honestly though, if I was gonna be going with an air-cooled graphics card in this, I would rather just go with a Founders Edition or a blower style card, simply because then the case isn't responsible for taking any of the heat out. If you haven't noticed, there's no fans anywhere in this case yet. We can mount fans to this, especially if we're going with air-cooling or water-cooling. Uh, but you can mount fans to the top and the bottom to kind of force a top to bottom airflow, which is what I would do. But ultimately, the graphics card then won't be relying on the case to exhaust the air. And especially if you're going with like a massive three fan cooler like in that Kingpin card, then it's gonna have, well, the case is gonna have its cut, work cut out for it to exhaust it. So once you have the bracket actually you know, mounted down in the back and then with the rigid uh, you know, riser card right there mounted to the chassis, you can see you can actually hold and move it around by the graphics card. That's how sturdy it is. So that's kind of a nice thing. Now I'm using a Z97 board here just as sort of a mock-up, but I think I'm going to go with, I kind of want to throw as much power into this as I can. This might be where I actually put my, either my 7700K or maybe even my 8700K, simply just for the like over the top ridiculous factor. So the standoffs are pre-installed. I'm not going to bother putting the IO on here because again, this is just a mock-up, but is that. So motherboard and graphics card are installed. I love the fact that they're separated. Uh, when it comes to CPU coolers though, you've got a maximum height of 66 millimeters clearance before you hit the side panel right here. 
So small form factor coolers are going to be a thing that you're gonna have to go shopping for. I know quite a few brands make them. So it would basically have to clear this. As you can see, that's the amount of height that you have to work with. But the nice thing is that, especially if it's a down fire, because most of the small form factor stuff that you find is gonna be a down fire. But because you have all of this ventilation right here, it's gonna be pulling the air directly from the cool side, blowing it down on all the components, your VRMs, your memory, your south, well, your chips, I almost said south bridge, God, going backwards there. Uh, your chipset as well as your CPU and components. So that's gonna be a nice feature to have. And I do wish that we had a little bit longer sleet or cord right here for our front panel, simply because I'm not convinced like if I was running, I guess it would barely fit. Like it would fit underneath the power supply right here. This is where your SFX power supply would go. They recommended uh, that we go, well, they recommended the Celsius S24 or the, the NZXT, mostly because of the rigid, rigidness, the rigidity. I think rigidity is the word I want, right? The rigidity of the tubes, because the problem here is going to be if you have really stiff tubes, uh -huh. Uh -huh. if you've got really stiff cooling pipes, then it's gonna be hard to get it in place. Cause once you start adding, like this is where a custom loop would actually be kind of nice because then you can have the, the length be exactly what you need it to be. So you won't have a bunch of excess. If you're dealing with an AIO, then obviously you've got a length of, of tubing here that's meant for like a much bigger case, which means you've got way more than you actually need. In fact, it looks like I might need to slide this over slightly too because I think we might be too close to the end right here. I see this though being a bit of a challenge to build in. I don't think they're denying that this is a challenge even though they're making it a lot more friendly because of the fact that uh, you, when components today, they're designed for bigger cases. You've got longer fan cables, you've got longer cooling pipes, the power supply cable length. Fortunately, SFX is usually very short because they're like, well, this is not going in a full tower, so we don't need all that length. But you know, you're still gonna have a lot of cables to have to deal with inside here. So that's something that uh, you know, tends to be a little bit of a challenge when you're building in cases this small. Take your top hat and put that into place. So there you can see we have two fans right here. What's cool is the fans are kind of split between compartments. So you've got some on the radiator or the, the CPU side, some on the GPU side, uh, but you can see that uh, this is creating obviously a negative pressure situation only. But the nice thing about the top hats is you can stack them. You can add more top hats on this. So I could go with the medium top hat, which will add about another, what is it, 25 or 26 millimeters around there to be able to put two more fans on here for push pull if I want it. Or likewise, I could put it on the bottom, put two fans on the bottom, pull in air through, pushing through the bottom of the case, up through the top, creating a very neutral cross flow, which would uh, be really good for the cooling of this case. But because all of this, all four sides, top, bottom, and sides, but are fully vented, like as you can see, we definitely are not gonna have a problem when it comes to cooling. Now, what about things like cable management and such? So cable management on here is pretty well thought out as well, right? Because we've got our tubes running along right here. Now they did mention that there's some stuff that they're still working on to make this a little bit more friendly for water cooling. They're gonna have points here to zip tie down your tubing, especially if you're going with a custom water cooled loop. The length on this appears to be perfect though. The NZXT Kraken anyway. They recommend the Kraken or I think I already said the S24 uh, from Fractal Design because of their much softer tubing. And that allows you to actually be able to bend this tubing as you need it. Um, so your RAM and stuff goes right there. It's going to clear this cable as you can see routes around This is the extension wire for the wall plug. So it routes around They're actually upgrading this part right here to be a screw in instead of a snap-in like it is right now So that's going to be changing But then all of your cables will actually come out your modular cables. Hopefully they're modular will come out this side That's why you have this big notch right here. So then you can easily have everything wired up and that's kind of what it would look like too if we had the, well, there's feet, right? They go on the bottom of feet to get it up off the ground. So it would end up looking something, you know, sort of like this, if we had the top hat on the bottom. I kind of think I'm gonna do a top hat, top and bottom when I do my build. That way we're getting good airflow through the case. But you know what, guys? I'm gonna go ahead and go. This has been pretty exciting. I was looking forward to this. They contacted me months ago I very, very rarely get involved with any sort of startup or crowdfund campaign or any of that. But this one caught my attention. Fully modular, 
small form factor, ultra small form factor that's modular, expandable, looks good, and the build quality is insane. These guys are in Sweden, and this is, a, this is a passion for them, and obviously it shows in their level of, of craftsmanship right here. So tell me what you guys think in the uh, comments below. I'll put links to where you can learn more about this and when it's gonna be fully retail available and ready. I'm glad to see that they are still tweaking the design a little bit to make it you know, a little more appealing. But uh, yeah, I'm excited to build in this guy. I might go for a white one though. I think the white would look really good, especially when it comes to dust and stuff. But all right, tell me what you guys think. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.